So how does the railgun work? You'll find out right after this. Hey everybody, I am Taylor and I'm the Stargate Guy, where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Today's another episode of How It Works, and we're looking at the railgun. The railgun was implemented both as an anti-aircraft gun, as well as aboard ships like the Daedalus, as well as the F-302. The railgun launches solid slugs at Mach 5 or more at a distance of 250 miles. Railguns have a 10,000 round magazine and can fire 500 rounds per minute. The railguns were first really seen defending Atlantis from the Wraith but were quickly implemented into the Prometheus, the Daedalus, the F-302s, and pretty much every ship that human beings ever created. Railguns are pretty effective at destroying small aircraft, such as the Wraith Dart, the Guawu Death Glider or Hatak Vessel, or cargo ships if you're feeling nutty. However, versus shields of the big capital ships, such as the Mothership or the Wraith Hive, they don't do a lot of damage at all. Now, when those shields are down, they do some pretty good significant damage, but in order for them to be down, you kind of have to catch them unawares, and that's difficult to do. Now, the railgun itself is a gun that does not use gunpowder in order to fire a projectile. Instead, it is run purely off of electricity and uses electromagnetic fields. These electromagnetic fields are run through bars that run parallel to the whole barrel and have their fields going in the same direction allowing the projectile to move right up the middle and shoot out at a high velocity. The more electricity, theoretically, the longer and faster the bullet can move. Now, having a bullet enter a, let's say, Wraith Dart at over Mach 5 can do a lot of damage, and it only takes a couple of rounds to destroy one of those ships. Now we're drifting a little bit into theory. Based on my research, I theorize that the rounds used in the railguns are not traditional 50 caliber rounds, but are rather 20 by 102 rounds. These are rounds used in the F-22 Raptors and are used for taking down aircraft. A 50 caliber round could do a decent job of it, but it would take a lot more than one of the 20 by 102s. Since this round was already used in the F-22 Raptors, theoretically, it would be super easy for the SGC just to get the bullet parts in order to use for their railgun. I theorize that these rounds would have to be belt fed through the device. Having a traditional magazine like you would in a AK-47, for example, or an M-16, it wouldn't really work because we don't have giant magazines hanging off the side of these railguns. Plus, in order to fit on board a F-302, theoretically, you would need something more malleable, such as a belt, in order to feed projectiles through and not a solid steel magazine. The anti-aircraft railgun seems to have a lot of electronics on it that make it motorized in order to go left, right, up, and down to acquire your target. It also seems to have some kind of tracking device on it, as well as infrared sensors. And it is likely that these types of railguns were fitted to the Prometheus, the Daedalus, and etc., 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 because they needed to have more movement than in an F-302, where they can be fixed in a forward position, and you rely on the ship itself to maneuver around an enemy in order to take out its target. However, on a ship like the Daedalus, for example, you don't really have that kind of maneuverability. Therefore, the turrets themselves would need to move to acquire the target. Now, with these rounds, a lot of them are tracer rounds. That is, rounds that you can see in the dark. Tracer rounds are frequently used within military in order to see where their rounds are hitting. Airplanes would use a tracer round every couple of rounds in order to make sure that they are on target. And tracer rounds are used with the railgun. When we first see the railguns, we see a purple tracer round. Now, purple tracer rounds are used in the military. They are the dim tracer rounds, and they are primarily used with the idea that the soldiers have night vision goggles on, so it's dim enough to see where you're shooting, but not bright enough to burn your eyes. Now, in order to make these rounds work, you would need to have three parts of potassium sulfate and one part potassium nitrate. This combination, when ignited, does make a violet or a purple streak across the sky when you fire it. Now, since the rounds are solid projectiles and are not based off of gunpowder, Gunpowder can explode, therefore it is a lot safer to use railguns on board any type of ship. And just a few years before the making of this video, we found out that United States Navy has actually been developing a railgun for the past like 10 years. Pretty much since Stargate started to come out with a railgun, uh, and that was just theorized, the idea is that they were actually starting to develop it at that time. Now the railguns that the U.S. Navy are making are made more towards like artillery rather than anti-aircraft. 
they're designing railguns in order to take out missiles such as nuclear warheads. And because of that, the size of these railguns are a lot bigger than the one seen in Stargate. We're talking about a railgun that can launch a 23 pound projectile at Mach 7. That is a lot of metal going very, very fast. It can pass through several layers of reinforced concrete. It can pass through six, seven plates, thick old plates of steel. This has the same striking force as some of the Tomahawk missiles, which takes a lot more money in order to create rather than a projectile. Now, these actual railguns in real life take a lot of electricity in order to fire them, and the rounds don't happen at nearly the speed as we see in Stargate. We're talking about 10 rounds per minute. Now, in order to fire the 10 rounds a minute, this gun needs to use 20 megawatts of power. That is the amount of power that is used by two largest factories. Therefore, the only real ships that do have that amount of power is like an aircraft carrier or a nuclear submarine. Therefore, the Navy is experimenting with these unused of land deployment because there's a lot more variables to test this gun. Yes, it is still under test and revisions, and there are a couple of prototypes in existence, but they're still working on this technology. If you notice here, the slug that comes out of this thing breaks out of a steel case. The flames that you see are not gunpowder. It is molten steel that is coming out of this thing by the friction that happens. Now, this box that encases the round breaks apart, and it guides the projectile straight through, and it's freaking incredible. The real-life rail guns that, personally, I believe were inspired from Stargate. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Great videos are coming out every week where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. You can click right here on another awesome Stargate content, or right here for another episode of How It Works. And until next time, I'll see you on the other side.